It's springtime in San Francisco. A perfect California day, lots of sunshine, record-breaking temperatures. And to make things even better, the circus is in town. But this isn't your ordinary sawdust sideshow, or even a glitzy three-ring extravaganza. This is Quebec Cirque du Soleil, with its little big top pitched on an inner city parking lot. With space for only 1,700 people, San Franciscans are happily paying up to $29 a piece for the chance to see the Canadians perform. <laughs> Using a single ring, Cirque du Soleil set out to reinvent the circus. Theatrical techniques have replaced some of the cliches and stereotypes of the greatest show on earth. A plot and characters weave some of the world's best acts into a non-stop performance that's captured spectators and critics alike. It all began just five years ago, when this man was breathing fire on the streets of Bay Saint-Paul, 50 kilometers outside Quebec City. 28-year-old Guy La Liberté was one of hundreds of French-Canadian street performers. His dream was to bring the best of them under one tent. What started out as a ragtag bunch of musicians, mime artists, and jugglers was quickly transformed into a slick, unique company, mostly through the drive and determination of Guy La Liberté. We should not forget that we were a bunch of young kids of 23, 24 years old who was on unemployment at that time, who had long hair, uh, but who all of us were believing that we were able to make it happen, and it was not easy. That sort of rags to riches transformation is the basis of the story that begins every Cirque du Soleil performance. A handful of scruffy, everyday characters appear out of the swirling mist and are magically changed into genuine circus stars. When they discover the tent full of spectators waiting for the show to begin. In reality, the lives of some of the stars of the Cirque du Soleil seem to have been touched by the same Cinderella effect. Only a few years ago, Andrew Watson was an office worker for an export company. His acrobatic partner, Jacqueline Williams, was an accountant. Tired of the nine to five routine, they decided to join the circus. Now they work at the very top of the tent, where their performance earned them a bronze medal at the World Circus Festival in Paris. The first time I saw it, I was just really wowed away because it, it was so... Um it was really a polished performance. But what... Celebrity photographer Annie Leibovitz has been shooting the stars of popular culture for more than a decade now. The Cirque du Soleil is her latest assignment for Vanity Fair magazine. I really fell in love with this circus because uh, it really is a circus about people. It's just a very romantic. They are very intertwined and they all help each other and they play every part. There really isn't one star. The whole troupe is the star. Okay, here we go. Let's try it. Come in. I mean, I see it as a love story. These people, they still are into the romance of the circus, and they love what they're doing. You know, you'd love to photograph anyone who loves what they're, what they're doing. You can see it when they go out. And uh, I was really impressed with that. You know? And I was impressed with when Antoine and Agate, they're married, and they do the tightrope you know, together. And they have a little child, and, and the way that while they're on performing, the other troop members watch the baby. It's really wonderful to stay backstage and watch what happens backstage. In this circus, the clown, Denis Lacombe, isn't a filler, but a featured performer. We don't have any tradition of circus in Canada, so we don't have uh, the real family tradition circus we can find in other circus around the world. But let me tell you, this is a real good family because the average of it the average of age is pretty low, so uh, and everybody seems to, to do, want to do circus in the same way. And we have a great respect from each other when we play, and that creates a kind of spirit that is so strong that it goes in the crowd. People, they have fun to be here because they're looking at somebody who has a really good fun to do what they're doing. And they're doing things that are hard to do, that are scary, that's dangerous, but we, they can see the fun all over that. 
Lacombe is in the spotlight a dozen times a show, shifting from one role to the next without much of a break in between. I think you, you're a clown when you're funny, when you can make people laugh of every ages and in every culture. I think that's the, the best thing without saying a word. Until Lacombe came up with the idea of clamping ski boots to a hidden trampoline, this act was just a scratchy rendition of the 1812 overture. Since he discovered that secret, his crazy conductor won a bronze medal at the Circus Olympics in Paris. After two years of research, I, I found the trick. I will remember the moment when I found it. I was in my truck and I said, wow, that's it. It will work. I, I knew it would be a classical act after that. It's Best fabulous. 1812 overture I've ever seen. It's terrific. Vraiment, sense of wonder. It brought out the four-year-old in me. I have never seen anything like this in my life. I came today and my husband wasn't able to make it, so I wanted to get a ticket for him and my little girl for next week. You know, people talk about the Cirque du Soleil reinventing the circus, being a different kind of circus. In what way is that true, do you think? It's like the, the ringmaster we have doesn't present the act, finally. He yeah. doesn't come in the ring and now, ladies and gentlemen... Michel Barrette does have a top hat and waistcoat, but that's where the similarity ends. He plays a ringmaster who can be less than a congenial host, at times showing an obvious lack of respect for the high-paying crowd at ringside. He'll even go so far as to have them doused with water. But the crowd laps it up. It turns out to be one of the running gags throughout the show. We tried to uh, do a show that was never, in, never had uh, breaks, you know? Because in regular uh, American circus, there's the, uh, the ringmaster that is always introducing the, the act and asking for applause at the end of the act. So we didn't want to have that because of the rhythm problem it creates, you know, it's always going like that, you know. You never have your audience hot. We started with a tradition that was half European and half American in our mind. You know? and we were trying to uh, renew it a bit. And then we, we encountered the Chinese way of doing a circus. Which is? Which is more like we do, but uh, like a teamwork. And everybody does everything, and everybody serves every number. We have also original music from one end to the other, which provides the atmosphere, the general atmosphere. And then we use theatrical lighting, costume designers that are very aware of uh, the subtleties of, uh, of each character and try to put up an ensemble, which is not the case in, in the regular uh, or traditional circuses around the world. Performers at the Cirque du Soleil come from a variety of backgrounds. Some from the European circus tradition, some from the theater, others from the Canadian national gymnastics team. And many of them were trained 5,000 kilometers from here at the National Circus School in Montreal. This is where the future stars of the Cirque du Soleil are groomed, learning everything from juggling to acrobatics far from the roar of the crowd. It's the only full-time training ground for circus help on the continent, and it was started by some of the same street players who made Cirque du Soleil such a success. A few blocks away, this century-old fire hall is the circus's Montreal home. This is where the business of the show gets handled, where the costumes are made and the bills paid. A staff of 40 deals with a thousand and one details that are necessary to keep the show on the road for 10 months of the year. Two weeks from now, the circus will open in New York City. 
and Guy La Liberté and artistic director Gilles Saint Croix are juggling acts to bring in a new routine from China and cover some minor injuries. Do the, the contortion and the tango. Yeah, that could be one thing, or, or just before the bicycle act. A graphic artist lays out the advertising for a splashy two-page spread in the New York Times. The cost? 75,000 US. It's part of a half million dollar campaign expected to lure some of the world's most demanding customers into the big top at up to $37 a head. That sort of ambitious, you might even say audacious approach is old hat for the Cirque du Soleil. In San Francisco, the show sold out for a month, yet still couldn't satisfy the demand. It was the same story for the previous three months when they set up on the beach in Santa Monica. But last September, when the Cirque du Soleil left Montreal to crack the American market, it was far from a sure thing. They headed straight for Los Angeles, the center of the entertainment world. They had no idea how they'd go over, but they went prepared. 80 people, 23 trucks and trailers, even a cafe-style restaurant serving everything from cornflakes to Cornish hen, 300 meals a day, like a small city on wheels. I will take the example they were booked for just three weeks at the Los Angeles Festival, a prestigious event they knew would make or break them. The move cost Guy La Liberté $2 million up front, but more than that, his circus was on the line. He had only one demand, that Cirque du Soleil open the Los Angeles Festival. Why? Because we do have, uh, and we do believe in, in our products and the strength of, of our products. So essentially you knew that you had one night in Los Angeles to make it a break. You wouldn't have to worry That's about it. That's what people. I knew. I, yes, to my other people and the people I'm working with. They, they were thinking I was crazy risking all the company on that. What and happened after that first night? Sold out. <laughs> Since we're in the United States, it's sold out show. L.A. was the stuff of dreams. The press loved the show, even gave Cirque du Soleil a special theater critics award. Scalpers sold tickets for as much as $200 a piece. And even Hollywood jumped on the bandwagon by buying the movie rights. We never doubt about the reaction of the general public, but being able to be the in thing in Los Angeles that was a big surprise. We, we could have made them walk in, in, in the mud for miles and they will still be coming. <laughs> One thing I want my people uh, to be is to be proud. And I'm just asking them if they're no more interested and they're no more passionate, I prefer to see them go away because that's what Cirque du Soleil is about. In another supporting role, ringmaster Michel Barret picks up half the troupe, eventually 13 people, for the grand finale. Riding that bicycle around, yes. what are the forces on you? What, what are you feeling? Well, we're, it's close to a ton of, uh, of um, meat. <laughs> <laughs> squirming like, human flesh yeah, exactly. on your shoulders. That, are balancing, uh, that is balancing on that bike. Uh, it's like uh, riding a very steep hill like that. You know? Last year, this tower on wheels won a bronze medal at the surface competition in Paris. But that doesn't mean that Guy La Liberté can rest on his laurels. Yes, I'm nervous until the last minute of the show because you never know what could happen. When it's all over and when it works. Uh, I sleep very good. <laughs> you have to understand one thing. Since the beginning of Cirque du Soleil show, it's been always a standing ovation after the show. So that's one good sign saying that whatever we're in Quebec, Canada, uh, the rest of Canada or in the United States so far, reaction had been all the same. Everybody's standing up after. All of them are all unanimous saying that they're having a two hour of very strong happiness feeling. And that's what we are, happiness merchants.